Now let's get into the part two of this long video. There is a very unique type of Chinese art that has also contributed many talented people into the acting world, Xi Qu, the traditional Chinese theater arts. There are many different types of Xi Qu. Beijing Opera, for example, the best known type, but there are also other types such as Yue Ju, Chuan Ju, Kun Qu. And many of the successful actors, actresses today come from that background. Let's talk about Beijing Opera and its performer who are now actors and actresses in Dramaland. For the guys first, there's a very well established, now rather old, not that old, actor that have played many golden supporting roles in many, many dramas, including last year's Word of Honor. Heizi, that's his nickname. His real name is Zhang Yonggang, the 1971 actor. He came from a very humble background, a small village in the northeastern province from a very poor family. And he got into the local Beijing Opera training school because that was the only way he could see that he can get out of his life and he really liked it. And for 13 years, he trained very hard, blood and sweat until he got very good at it. When he was 23 years old, which is rather old for getting into universities, he finally got enrolled in Shanghai Theatre Academy and its directing major. And for years and years, built up his portfolio till today being one of the golden supporting roles of his age range. If you still remember uh, during the concert of Word of Honor that he did a little bit singing and you can tell he has Chinese Beijing Opera training. When he was in the Beijing Opera school, his Hang Dang, the specific type of roles he plays is Hua Lian, painted faces. Very cool, very difficult to do. Then for the younger actors, Niu Junfeng from many, many different dramas that you've watched and a pretty good actor. Zheng Yecheng, also from many, many dramas and personally, I really, really like him as an actor. And then Yu Jiwei, the ancient detective guy who is sick throughout the entire drama is actually a Beijing opera performer. Niu Junfeng started learning when he was 10 years old and he got into Zhongguo Xiqu Xue Yuan, National Academy of Chinese Theater Art. It has produced many well-known names in both the traditional Xiqu and then in acting. When he was in the Beijing Opera School, his Hang Dang is Lao Sheng, older male rose, long-bearded old man. Then the actor Zheng Yecheng, he also started learning Beijing Opera when he was 10 years old. He also graduated from Zhongguo Xiqu Xue Yuan. And his Hang Dang is Wu Sheng, Wu, Wu Gong, Wu Xia fighting the type of martial arts. So he would be playing mostly young generals, a lot of fighting young men. In a recent variety show, he played Zhao Yun, which would belong to the type of Hang Dang that he was majored in. The years of training did help him to be very good at physical movements and fightings and all types of wire work. He's one of the best actors at fighting on screen in period dramas, in my opinion, right now in China. Then Yu Jiwei, not that many people are familiar with this actor, but if you've watched Ancient Detective, you know about him. And it's funny that he plays this very weak character in the drama, but in reality, years of Beijing Opera training and a lot of Tan Zigong, which is somersaults and all those body movements he can do. His Hang Dang is Xiao Sheng, young man. In comparison to Niu Junfeng's old man, Lao Sheng, and then Zheng Yecheng's fighting general type of role, he would be playing those young men who are more focused on singing in the younger type of voice. And if you hear him singing uh, on his social media, where there's a lot of videos, you can tell he has a very good type of voice for pop song singing. As for the ladies, there are also many, many actresses very well established today who come from Beijing opera background. For example, the very beautiful Jiang Qingqing from Chongqing. She actually learned Beijing opera for years before she got into Beijing Film Academy acting major. And when she was in Beijing opera school, her Hang Dang is Dao Ma Dan, the type of female general that fights on stage, super cool. And then from Central Academy of Drama in Beijing, there was a famous class called the 96 class where they all got into the school for acting major in 1996 and produced some of the greatest actors and actresses today. The stardom class, where it includes people such as Zhang Ziyi, Liu Ye, Yuan Quan, Qin Hai Lu, Zeng Li. And among this class, there are three girls who all majored in Beijing opera before they got into this acting class. In terms of their Hang Dang, Qin Hai Lu also was a Dao Ma Dan, the female fighting general type of roles. As for Zeng Li and Yuan Quan, they both majored in Qing Yi, 
considered to be the most representative type of female roles in Beijing opera, usually playing the good women, the loyal wife, the morally impeccable great lady, and often slightly older in age compared to young danzhuer, unmarried young girls. Usually the actresses who got selected for Qingyi have the type of more matured ladylike appearance and their voice has to have the more mature type of quality. Now the final category, they belong to the category where I would consider to be they have nothing to do with acting but suddenly they decided to do it and then they are so good at it type of actor. And it just happens to be all men, but there are other actresses who also come from unrelated background to acting whatsoever and got really, really good at doing it. First is the actor Lu Fangsheng. I've talked about his portfolio in my review, the Goodbye to Mama drama. He immigrated with his parents when he was very young to Japan due to his father got a job offer there. Went to high school in Japan, got into Japanese university, majored in business administration. After he got his degree and graduated, he just decided this is not the thing I like and against his parents wish he got back to China and got enrolled in Beijing Film Academy's master's degree. You will see his great performance in the drama such as Longest Day in Chang'an, Chang'an Shi Shichen and then last year's I highly recommended drama where he plays a Japanese role who came to China in the 1980s as a Japanese invested factories branch leader and he used his fluent Japanese in the drama and super convincing acting. Definitely a very interesting person in terms of I discovered my passion of life later than other people, but hey, I am so talented at that. Then we have two other actors who are very similar in this respect that they both discovered what they really like rather late, but are super good at doing it. First is Wang Xiao playing literally any type of dramas, he has no limit in range. He's been in a very realistic grounded police drama. He's been a highly highly mellow but also realistic drama recently because of love. He's played a god in fantasy drama such as Ten Miles of Peach Blossoms. Anyway, he just literally has no limit and he's so good at every role he does. His line delivery is perfect and he's the son of a very famous actress in China, Wang Fuli. His family literally is completely in this business and because of that, the parents actually didn't want him to continue on this route. They didn't want him to get into acting. Very traditional parents who wanted him to have the traditionally respectable job such as lawyer and doctor and that type of thing. Very Asian. He has a very interesting overseas study uh, background. He first went to Russia for two years, then he went to Canada. And in Canada, he was actually majored in 3D animation. Yeah, 3D animation, can you believe it? Also has a master's degree in business administration. He worked in Canada for six years before he decided to go back to China and say, now I'm gonna become an actor. A very interesting route of career, more obstacles and longer years of figuring out what I like than Lu Fangsheng, but he eventually arrived and he is such a great actor. I'm so thankful that he didn't give up on his dreams and his passion. And now we have this great supporting golden actor for every role that you can imagine. <laughs> he can play it. There's another actor who also has very similar background, who probably is not so well known, but I've looked at a couple of dramas he's been in and got really impressed by his acting. He also was one of the actors in the drama Chang'an Shi Er Shichen, Longest Day in Chang'an. <laughs> that crew has many people with a similar background. This actor is called Cai Lu. Similar to Lu Fangsheng, he immigrated to America with his parents when he was very young and then he went to University of New York. He got a double degree in economics and politics before he decided no my real passion is actually acting and then he went to Beijing Film Academy and got a master's degree in acting. I remember very clearly in the drama that's led by Dou Xiao of a psychology um, topic, he was one of the doctors there and there's extensive scenes of him speaking English on phone and I'm like wow he sounds like a native speaker. And then I looked at his information online and I was like, okay, that clearly explains why. Thinking about that, Dou Xiao also immigrated to Canada when he was young with his family. <laughs> See, like sometimes it's just like within the same crew, you have like multiple people, somehow fate brings them together. They all have very similar backgrounds. One last actor I want to talk about is a little bit different. He didn't go to an overseas university or immigrated. He didn't have those very glorious, let's say, um, degrees in universities. He 
always knows he wants to be an actor, but he did it through the difficult ways, which is the actor Zhang Ziqian. I first noticed him from the drama Bureau of Transformers. He played the water bear character who cannot die. I was super impressed by his acting and I tried to find out his background story. And then there's hardly any information online. There's no open information about the year of birth of his. Although we can kind of guess due to his work experience, I think he was born in the 80s, exactly when, I'm not sure. He never got to an acting academy. He loved acting, loved this industry that he started his career by working all kinds of jobs on set such as ordering food, doing logistics, gradually moving on to doing a little bit assistant director's job and then getting smaller roles and getting offered with more major supporting roles. Now he has become also a go-to person for a lot of supporting roles. Last year's Rebel definitely showed that he is a great actor, one of the best anti-hero bad guys in that drama. And the drama would be much less flavorful if it wasn't for his role there. Similar to Wang Xiao, that whatever role you throw at him, he can do it very well and convincing. So these four actors, I put them in the category that belongs to, they just didn't seem to be related to acting at all in the beginning of their career or during their school years, but later decided to go into this industry and got really, really good at doing what they do. They can probably teach us a lesson in terms of it's never too late to pursue your passion. So that should conclude the unexpected series of two videos talking about actors coming from all kinds of interesting backgrounds. If you also know people who are in Chinese Romland who have very interesting career path. Do let us know. Leave that in the comment. Also, if any of the people's background information surprised you during this video, also share that with us in the comment section. Thank you for watching Avenue X. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.